this. Welcome. It's been quite some time. Seems you've been summoned to the Velvet Room. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. Now then, your journey has taken you quite a distance thus far. Do you believe you'll be able to successfully solve this mystery? I don't know. Hmm. With this being the very hour of your ordeal, it may not be so easily overcome. The precise destination of this vehicle, ah, that too is getting rather hard to judge. If we continue driving blindly, we may end up leading you further away from the mystery that you must reach. Well, why don't we take a moment to look back on your journey? It was for that purpose that I summoned you here tonight. Margaret? Whoa, voices you've heard many times before echo in your mind. Oh, God. I think we need to start being more selfish. We are experiencing the words engraved into your memory during your journey. Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right, together. And it seems you have comrades with you as well. Those heading in the same direction through this dense fog. Seems that the car has come, has stopped moving. We'll be parked for the moment while I confirm our current heading. As I mentioned previously, this year will signal a great change in your life. Though there isn't much time left, it can be worth your while to take the time to stop and reflect. People are like water flowing in a river. There is only one stream but all who pass through it are affected differently. Some travel fast, some change their course, experiencing countless events as they travel down the river of time. Just so. The state of this room reflects the scenery of your heart. Exquisite. Perhaps this may be a time for contemplation rather than action. Wait a second. No, I should not be opening up that door. Seems that you've been sleeping until now. You hear the doorbell ringing. Someone seems to be at the door. Okay. Teddy's missing. I looked all over the neighborhood, but I couldn't find him anywhere. Okay, I'm worried. Yeah, me too. He was acting all weird lately. Rise and the others are checking inside the TV to see if he's gone back to the other side. We're meeting pretty soon, so will you come with me to Juness? Where could Teddy have gone? In any case, you decided to go looking for go look for him. No use, man. We can't find him. No luck for me either. I didn't sense anything over there. The fog's so dense, it might be affecting my readings. I wish I could do better. I'm sorry. Uh, Ted. Don't tell me he really went back to his world this time. We told him over and over that he could stay here. 
You recall the mysterious dream you had last night. This may be the time for contemplation rather than action. This is what Igor said, but... Let's think about this. I guess that's all we can do right now. He plays them a lot, but he's attached to us deep down. He wouldn't disappear without saying anything, right? I'm worried for Teddy myself, but let's trust in him and await his return. Right now, we must concentrate on the case. It won't be long before Namatame is transferred to another location. We must hurry, or we will miss our only chance to get his perspective on this. You know, I've been thinking about the case since, but something just doesn't seem right. Let's quickly review the facts. Of all the victims, only two were killed. Miss Yamano the announcer, and Saki-san. From the documents we found in the car, we know Namatame had some sort of dealings with them. After that, there were multiple attempted murders in which we were targeted. It was only when he took Nanako-chan that we caught him in the act, identifying his modus operandi in the process. I want to hear you put it like that. Sounds like the dude's guilty. As a result of Namatame's arrest, the police admitted that Mitsuo Kubo was a mere copycat killer. Back up to yesterday. Remember when you said Namatame didn't have a motive to kill the announcer? That's what's bothering me. Right. Either he's completely nuts, or we're misunderstanding something. You lost me. She's trying to say that if Namatame is sane, then there may be facts in the case we don't know about yet. Sane or insane? Sounds like a play I saw before. When he talks about saving people, what does that actually mean? I don't think there's any doubt that it includes kidnapping people and throwing them into the TV. Could he mean saving them through death? He did call himself a savior, and said that the other side is a wonderful world. So they'll be saved if they die? What a bunch of crap! The bastard should have gone and saved himself! What do you think, senpai? I feel like there's something else. Think about it normally, it's gotta be him. But there ain't nothing normal about that world anyways. There's something I've been wondering about for a while. When we first encountered him, he said, You're the ones I saved. Don't worry, I'll save this girl too. So, um, if he saves people by killing them, did he save us too? Wait a second. No, his version of saving is actually getting you personas. Wouldn't he actually have failed to save us? You raise a good point. If he thinks that salvation comes only through death, his words to us make no sense. And another thing, the Namatame who appeared on the Midnight Channel said he failed to save Nanako-chan. Well, maybe he really was trying to save the victims by putting them inside the TV. Come on, don't get all quiet like that. You guys know I just say the first dumb thing that pops into my head. <laughs> the possibility that he truly intended to save us. But he's still the one who threw in Saki-senpai and that announcer, right? Sure, we haven't nailed down his motives, but that doesn't change the fact that he killed them. Or what? You think someone else was involved? What makes you think so? Namatame's diary? That point straight at Namatame. Come on, man. Her alibi? Wasn't it airtight right from the beginning? How could she kidnap people and throw them into TVs if she's out of the country? Morning letter? Morning letter. Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to that thing? If Namatame's the killer, he must have been the one who wrote it, right? Let's review them.
Yes, that's right. Isn't that kind of odd? Would someone who thinks he's saving people by killing them write stuff like don't rescue or kill? Oh, I did miss something. God damn it. Yeah, and the will be put in and killed part doesn't make sense either. If the killer was writing it, wouldn't it be more like I'll put in and kill? Hey, could this mean... Namatami didn't write it. Yeah. It's almost like someone else wrote this letter. But only the killer would write such a letter and deliver it to Dojima-san's house, right? If someone else wrote it, that could only mean... Dear God. Since this is such an unusual case, I was absolutely convinced that other than the Kubo incident, there was one culprit. So, Namatame really was trying to save his victims? Everything is exactly the opposite of what it first seemed. In Namatame's parlance, failing would have been the first two cases when the victims died. If he had used his method twice and failed both times, he would hardly have continued using the TV. And yet, he did. Oh. It all seems to suggest that someone else wrote this warning letter while observing the entire case. Someone else? Then it wasn't Namatame that killed Saki-senpai and the announcer? We can't say for certain yet. We urgently need to speak with Namatame face to face. You all work together and take another step toward the truth. Wow! How though? After what happened yesterday, they said they're gonna tighten security. I have a plan. But there's no time to waste. Let's hurry to the hospital. <laughs> 